Hey guys, Wrangler here, and I promised y'all an update just as soon as I got one on News Now Dumbwaiter, aka Elevator Boy, aka, well, he's not exactly a Mensa member, is he? Anyway, this is uh, an update on his upcoming parole hearing, or I'm sorry, probation revocation hearing. Enjoy. I've got uh, breaking information <laughs> on the uh, Hardin County court case. Um, that most of you guys know about. And I'm gonna wait for some people to come into the room as usual. Sorry about my background. I'm out on our uh, smoking porch. So it's not real pretty back here. And the reason we've learned it recently is because uh, last week I had a, a meeting with our attorneys and you guys probably saw the live that I did afterwards. Um, I was pretty upset because I didn't feel like it went so well in that I was being pressured once again to do a plea bargain. <laughs> um, same one, nothing changed. We just spent more money. And um, on top of that, um, the conditions were if I either lost or did a plea bargain, then the civil suit was gone. <laughs> well, here's my question. If you did, weren't there to get the arrest in the first place, then what civil suit could you possibly have? And if you're not guilty, why would you plead? It doesn't really make any sense considering that there is no plea. It's a revoc revocation hearing. There's nothing to plead because your case has already been adjudicated. I'm not willing to do that. So uh, the outcome very specifically was told to me um, was going to be 30 days in jail. And that is in fact what the Hardin County prosecutor is pushing for, which I don't know. <clears throat> So in that meeting that I had with the attorneys uh, a week or two ago, I was given some new documentation. And as you guys know, that stuff has to be researched. You can't just sit there and look at it within a couple minutes and understand exactly what everything is, especially when you're working with the timeline of some things that do exist and some things that don't exist. Well, here's my question. Why are you having to research anything if you have these team of attorneys, the team working for you? Why are you having to research anything? And please don't tell me you're about to go off into one of your conspiracy rants again. I had to research them. So we brought them home. We researched them. We finally got time to do that um, after the other stuff was going on um, with, with um, Jeffersonville PD and all that stuff. So we had to make time. It's almost hard for me to tell you guys about this because it's so crazy. It's so crazy that almost, you know, it's hard to believe. Like, it really is hard to believe. <laughs> uh, but it's true, and I'm, I can show that with the facts, which is what I'm trying to do. I want to go to court and argue the original case because, you know, and I also want to go to civil court. And Well, you don't get to argue the original case because it's a revocation hearing. You, the original case has already been adjudicated. Otherwise, you wouldn't be on parole. I'm tired of having to tell you this. And you want to go to civil court? I want a 1984 Ferrari Daytona Spider, black, convertible. But I ain't Sonny Crockett. Are you in a 1983 fashion? Because it, I'm telling you guys, it's obviously being done. In, it's a conspiracy. Like the real deal, the 241 conspiracy. It has to be, or well, maybe it doesn't have to be, but it has to be so many errors, so many errors that it might as well be a conspiracy. Like it has this whole, their whole offense makes no sense based on the evidence that I'm producing. Uh, really? Because I was taught the simplest explanation is usually the correct one. And in, in other words, you're just a moron who's a grifter who's trying to e-bag money and you're trying to set up fake chili like fundraisers. Is that does that that sounds like a more simple explanation than the entire county government in Kentucky is conspiring to put you in jail for 30 days or make you go to drug treatment. Yeah, I'm going to go with the former on that one. 
don't have it in our in our judicial system. We don't have it in our legal system. We don't have it with our government at all. So what you just said is so wrong that it makes me want to cry a little. Money is, you know, granted, I've collected a lot of money on this. I've spent a lot of money on this, but you all have to understand that I've gone through four attorneys now um, and each one of them, you know, uh, every bit of that costs money, every bit of it all the way along. And I felt terrible in that, you know, it was looking like in the end, it was going to need to be a plea bargain, which basically got us nowhere. So, you know, I spent a lot of nights really upset. It's conspiracy, no matter how they look at it. And I will be taking legal action, utilizing 241, which is the federal elements for conspiracy. Uh, I will be taking that action, whether or not I go to jail, it doesn't matter. Um, if I go to jail or not, I can still press this. So, Dude, I got to hand it to you there, elevator boy. Your conspiracy theories make me want to put Mulder and Scully on this case. Handed four records, four pieces of paper out of two different case records. Actually, three, I'm sorry. Speeding ticket was one case, which is teeny tiny, but it's still a case. Um, and then um, two documents from the Hardin County current case where they're alleging that 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 I um, got caught by an officer and a Department of Child Services worker having a joint in the cabinet, but the address didn't exist, and, you know, I don't have any kids and all that kind of thing. Oh, my God. First of all, you would need the governor's signature in order to get you a new trial in that state because it's closed. Second, you're not retrying this case. You're already convicted. And it doesn't matter what the speeding ticket has to do with anything. So stop just trying to muddy the waters with your bullshit just so you can try to e-grift funds later. This is a dead case and you know it. Do better. In 1999, so let's, let's make sure we understand the timeline here. In 1998, they're alleging Hardin County, the, the DCS worker and the cop and the, and the marijuana cigarette. That's 1998. Then 1999, Meade County, an hour away. Now, that case is real. Okay, that one was me. And I was put in Meade County Jail over an incident that did occur. You know, it may not have occurred exactly the way everything is on the forums and papers, but it did occur, and I did get locked up, you know. And in my mind at the time, I deserved it, you know. So, um, yeah, I spent some time, a good heart because I agreed in that. I felt like I needed some time in jail. Now I didn't do anything really super, super terrible. Uh, as a matter of fact, looking back on it now, I should have pled not guilty and not even served time, but why not? Didn't you assault someone in the act? And, um, yeah, it didn't go so well. So I ended up getting in the fight and, um, calling the cops on myself in the end, more or less. But I just said, you know, hey, man, like. And told him what? Hey, my skank girlfriend's cheating on me? Um, so I wasn't trying to get out of jail. I wasn't even trying. And this is Meade County, 1999. Um, so in that case, one form, actually two or three documents, but one of them is very important, are obviously the ones I'm saying no go because they're saying one for Hardin County Court from back in 1998 uh, person pleading guilty wasn't me so I'm saying that signature complete BS doesn't look anything like mine um, and then a probation form from that so like the person would have in in their um, creation of documents if you were to put it to a real life thing like writing a movie script out of what they've written court day and pled guilty, just right off the bat, just straight up pled guilty, and no argument, I guess, and it, that's fishy alone because the address that the officer wrote down has never existed in humankind time, never existed. Uh, You're gonna find this hard to believe, dumbwaiter, but a lot of people don't like you. Uh, all of my people don't like you. And in fact, some of them live in that area of Kentucky and have pulled up that address on Google. It exists. Stop lying. I'm saying that if such an incident occurred, wouldn't you have a real address? And wouldn't said person offer the correct spelling of the name? So if, if, if some person really was using my ID, wouldn't the officer have written a real address? And wouldn't 
it been been um, is that this person was not alleged to be. I mean, they didn't allege on paper it. There is no homeowner. So if if there's marijuana found in the kitchen cabinet, put a one in the chat if you think that would be on the homeowner, whoever owned the trailer or rented it or whatever. Like that, mind if I smoke. So, so these two signatures that they had, I looked at them and immediately I was like, that is definitely not my handwriting. Never has been, never will be, just definitely not. So, the are you going to provide any receipts for any of this garbage or are you just going to keep doing live streams bitching about it's a Tom Clancy level conspiracy to put you in jail for 30 days? I mean, come on, man. Try harder. Those are not my signatures. That's, that's, there we go. You know, first time I said, well, you misspelled the name. That's, that's why it's wrong. Then I said, well, you don't, that's not my address ever. That Now you're wrong. Then I'm saying it wasn't me. I can show you all you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You know, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I've been saying it the whole time because it's true. Um, so, yeah. So, well, here we are now with these two signatures on these two forms inside of the, the case records. And we're talking about records on paper from, you know, from a file that's allegedly a file that's been sitting in the file cabinet at the clerk's office for 25, 26 years, I think if I'm doing the math right. And it's it does not appear so. There's things that are current that are after, okay, so like 10 years later, there's stuff in that file and nothing happened. Nothing changed over that 25 years until now, until recently, uh, January 2nd of this year, 23. So why would there be things added to that case file until now? That makes no sense either. Wow, I'm just amazed that you can do all this legal research with running a highly successful international, or I'm sorry, contracting business with those international clients. Okay, and there has been. There's been things that they're using that they're saying have been added since then. Doesn't make sense. Um, I mean, I guess it could make sense. It can make sense if, they're, if, if it's people putting it in there. And they were supposed to, by law, archive all this stuff so it could be put in digital form and saved in at the Kentucky capital of Frankfurt. That is the rules. Now, is that for just felonies or is that misdemeanors as well? And um, for some reason, they've kept this old paper record sitting in the drawer, never did send it to archive. And not only that, but they are missing imperative portions of those records that they absolutely have to retain by law. If there's still an open case, they're not allowed to throw away anything out of that record. But again, moron, it's not an open case. The case has been adjudicated. The punishment has been handed out. You violated the punishment. That's why you got a probation revocation hearing, because you were given probation in lieu of jail time. You violated that when you didn't complete it, and then you absconded the jurisdiction, and that's why you're at where you're at right now. The case, no, it's not an open case. You are as dumb as anything I've ever seen in my life. So here's what they've thrown away. Fingerprints, mugshots, video of the courtroom, which was on VHS at the time. They've thrown it away. And they've admitted to throwing it away. They're saying we disposed of those particular portions of this record. Again, because it was a closed case. That's not how it works, y'all. The way it works is if you're at the clerk's office and you've got a record that you've exceeded the retention schedule for her. it's it's time to throw it away we well, don't actually throw it away you archive it in kentucky and then you at the courthouse at the clerk's office can dispose of that entire record all of it you know because you can't keep storing stuff forever and ever you'd need a bigger building you know so and that's where he ended it so apparently the entire state of kentucky is conspiring to lock him up for 30 days uh, i don't get it Anyway, guys, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be covering his live stream here in just a little while. So it's Wrangler. I'm out of here. I love y'all. Have a good one.